Hello and welcome. Let's talk about the Chicago Marathon. As you know, it's one of the largest marathons in the U.S., known for its fast times due to its fast course. And so let's talk about how to run your best at Chicago. Like I've said in all the other marathon preview videos, I want you to watch my pre-race rules and guidelines video, and then also watch the half marathon and marathon pacing videos. So it'll give you an idea of the things I'd like you to be aware of before the race, as well as during the race with regard to your pacing. And then always, as always, go to the McMillan Running website, go to the Learn section, and I've got a Coach Greg's pep talk article there. I always find athletes, when they read that a few times before the race, they seem to be more prepared to do their best on the day. So let's now take a little bit of a look at Chicago, the things you need to be aware of as you run the course. Here is the race course of, uh, naturally, and uh, if you've run Chicago before, you know it's gigantic. It's a very, very large race. And so, just as I mentioned in other videos, you need to do a lot of logistical prep work before the race begins. Mainly, that is, how are you going to get from where you're staying to your starting corral? Now, if you're staying at one of the large hotels near the start-finish line, then you'll need to be prepared for crowded elevators the morning of the race. You've got to allow extra time. It will take you longer to get from your where you're staying to your starting corral um, on race day than it does in the days leading into the race. So be aware of that and plan extra time. And one little tip, if you're waiting at the elevator and one after the other comes by and it's full, uh, then go ahead and hit the up button, catch the next elevator up, then you'll already be on the elevator and you can make your way down. Or of course you can take the stairs if you're on a lower level. So just a little tip there. Uh, now the other thing related to Chicago is not just the elevators to get out of your hotel, but it is how to get to the starting line. The starting line is not as easy to get to as some other races, so you really want to do a good job of preparing, scouting it when you're at the race, uh, when you arrive in Chicago, and then make sure you go and you can go to the website, the Chicago Marathon website, go to participant information and click on this starting corrals um, link and you will get a lot of information about the starting corrals. And of course, when you get to the race, you can scout that, know exactly where your corral is, know how you're going to get there because a lot of entries, are, a lot of ways you might go normally are blocked off on race morning. So it's really important that you know how you're going to get to your starting corral. Allow plenty of time, do the walk uh, before the race, in the days before the race, see how long it takes you, maybe double that uh, for race morning to account for. 30,000 people trying to go to the same spot. And if you try to go to the front of the race and make your way backwards to your corral, you are going to not be able to do that. So you need to know how you're going to get into your corral. I cannot stress that enough. I know I sound like I'm harping on it, but I've seen so many athletes panicking to try to get to their corrals because they didn't scout it the day before. They didn't know that they couldn't go this way because that would be blocked. The way they got to their corral was a different way, and that would have helped them be less stress on race morning. So do your prep, know where your corral is, scout it, do a preliminary walk from where you're staying over to your starting corral so you feel very, very comfortable um, that way. Obviously, keep track of the weather. If the weather is good, Chicago is a great place to run really fast. So monitor the weather and make adjustments if necessary, depending on how the weather's looking. Um, obviously, if you have any last minute questions, then just let me know. Happy to answer those for you as you lead into the race. Now, let's look at the race itself. It is a flat course with a lot of turns that basically runs north and south mostly, and then some east and west. So if there's wind, no matter which direction is coming, you're going to have it for a little bit. Um, the start here is, uh, as I mentioned, really crowded. It is a mass start for this marathon. So there's just thousands and thousands of people. In theory, in your corral, you should be around other people of your similar speed. But I think all of us who have done multiple marathons know it seems like no matter how well the race organizers try to set up the corrals, you still find people in front of you that are significantly slower than you want to run. 
that can be a little bit of a stressor at the start of Chicago because it is such a mass start. There's so many people and you can find yourself sort of bobbing and weaving to try to get through the slower traffic. Now, the negative of that is that uh, that can be very stressful. It can create a lot of anxiety at the start of the race, which you don't want. You want to be super relaxed. On the other hand, it does keep you from going too fast too soon because on this flat course, it's a great place to use that negative split idea that I talked about. You don't have to be out the gun on your race pace. It's okay to be a few seconds per mile slower in the first three or four miles of this race. You'll easily make that up later. Sometimes that is just a byproduct of this very crowded start. So I say all this to, to sort of let you know that it's okay if it's a little bit crowded and you're having to go a little bit slower and you may have to get around some people. Just relax, go with the flow, don't worry about it. Know that the race will open up and soon you'll have a clear running room and you can easily make up that time a little bit later in the race. That's much better than worrying about it, trying to really find your pace and forcing yourself uh, to essentially expend extra energy to try to get your pace when you're having to stop, start, move uh, from side to side to get around people. So just try to be calm at the start of the race. Uh, the race heads north and then we turn west and comes right back near the start. So the first two to three miles of the race is really packed with the crowds because obviously if you're a spectator you can easily get uh, to this section to see uh, your person multiple times so expect very large crowds for the first 5k of the race and then you'll head back north uh, for quite a while you'll get to seven eight miles up here uh, so you've got a long stretch of running north and there'll be good crowds along there as well. And this is flat running. It's really enjoyable running. You'll be a little bit slower as we mentioned for the first 5k or so and that's all right. Then you'll start finding your groove during this section of the race. This is a really lovely part of the race to just settle into goal marathon pace and let the miles roll by. You can see you make a turn and you begin to head south and come back toward downtown and where the start finish is. Uh, and then right around here, you'll hit the half marathon mark. So again, lots of crowds in this section because it's easy for people to go from the start over into this section to watch you and cheer for you. Now, I feel like at Chicago, because it is a flat and fast course, you don't want to be faster than even pace through halfway, but I really suggest that you are slightly negative. And again, watch that marathon pacing video, but I love the idea of you being one to 2% slower than your goal marathon time through the half marathon. And again, a lot of that comes in the first 5K where it's a little bit slower going to begin with and then you settle into goal pace. That'll leave you about one to 2% slower through halfway. That's a perfect pacing for a race like Chicago because you can make up that time because there's nothing sort of interrupting your flow. There's no hill coming. There's no giant uh, terrain change that really will get in your way. You can really dial in goal pace and uh, and run really well. Now I will say the entire trick to running well in Chicago from my standpoint, uh, from all my experience of working with athletes at the front, middle, and the back of the pack in Chicago is that you need to be ready for this section. So here's halfway, that's always exciting and there'll be a lot of crowds, but then you'll run farther west to the 15 mile mark and you'll turn. Now this is where you are the farthest away from the big crowds. And so a lot of athletes, they really struggle from say this 15 mile mark all the way down to about almost 21 miles. So this six mile stretch here, I find is the part where athletes really struggle. The crowds are thinner, so you don't have that motivation. You're still far enough away from the finish line uh, and you're kind of exposed. It's not in the big city with the big buildings. You're sort of out in the outlying areas. And so I find a lot of athletes lose their pace in this section of the race. So you want to be mindful of that mentally. 
to know that you'll be holding yourself back, you'll be coming through halfway, uh, preferably one, two percent slower, a uh, negative split, and then mentally get ready that you're going to have to do a lot inside your own head in this part of the race. It's not as crowded. The race is thinned out, so you could even be running by yourself. You've still got a long way to go. You've got 10 miles from here to go. And I find that you need to be really mentally strong during this section because you want to keep your pace going. This is a place where people can often start to lose time. You're getting tired, and so you get tired. There's not as many crowds. You might be running on your own. All of those things can lead to, lead, lead to you losing time. So be attentive. Pay attention. Know that when you get to 16, 17, you're going to need to up your mental focus to stay on pace. You don't have to run faster, but stay on pace. And that takes a little bit more mental effort through this section. Now, when you get down here, this is Chinatown, just past the 21 mile mark. Chinatown is off the charts loud. It is crazy wild tons of cheering, a very exciting part of the race because you know you've made it past 20 miles and you're getting close to the finishing stretch. So as you begin to leave 19, 20 miles, start getting excited. Start picking up the pace. Start seeing yourself really rolling toward the finish line. You're going to get a huge boost through Chinatown. Big crowds, lots of excitement. You'll find your pace will pick up in this section of the race. Then you're going to head south uh, before turning and heading north. Now, this is the critical section, right? I mean, you've passed 21 miles and you're kind of as far away from the finish line. You've gone as south as far as you can. And then you're going to turn and make this big stretch all the way to the finish line. This is where you need to be passing a lot of people. This is where you want to bring your superpowers together really 100%. There's nothing in your way here. It is flat and fast, so just go for it. You've got one little on-ramp, uh, unfortunately, right near the finish of the race that's kind of tough, but it's no different than a lot of races where there's a little hill that you wish wasn't there, but you've just got to do it. And then once you get across that, you'll turn and head to the finish line. Obviously, the crowds will be bigger around this area. So it's a great race for running fast if the weather's correct. You've got to be ready to get to the start because that can be a challenge. You've got to be ready for sort of a congested start at times, ready for lots of crowds and it's okay if you're a little slower than goal pace and then really d start to dial in your goal pace through this section where you're heading north and then coming back south to around half marathon where you're maybe one or two percent slower uh, negative split get mentally ready for this section i'm telling you if you can run strongly from mile 15 to mile 20 you will save your time in the race this is where people lose most of their time because they don't stay attentive and then once you get here this is just like any part of the marathon it's going to be tough but you've got all this sort of momentum and excitement from chinatown to really put the finishing touches on this race beat that one little on-ramp hill here and then you'll have the lovely straight uh, all the way to the finish line so it's a wonderful race. I hope that helps you feel a little bit more prepared. As always, let me know if you have any questions and good luck. Bye.